Yes, yes. Let's talk about those sensitive memories where our love gets shaken. The lessons we learn. The water crystalline, baby. Yo. Water crystalline, emotional memories that's frozen in the back of my mind. Let's set it free. Starting junior high school, her name was the Candace. I had the biggest crush, but not much more that I managed. Was my first number and phone call through the panic. I pressed the seven digits and I bid for her friendship. First month, first year, three, four, five. Diamond. Diamond. Welcome to another episode of Easy Stars Variety Society. I'm trying to get up the screen right here um, and get comfortable. Uh, this is another episode of my uh, Sedona Diaries. Um, again, started out in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I decided I wanted to go to Sedona. But it was too difficult uh, financially wise to stay in Sedona. They kind of got that wrapped up. In Sedona so Flagstaff was the next best thing still pretty expensive there in Flagstaff but we ain't gonna say that about that um, what I wanted to do today is last time I came to you and had a little talk with you I kind of um, was more focused in on uh, getting finances straight so that I could make my next move and on that note I do have a job. Today is uh, May the 8th. And starting Friday, this is two, This is Wednesday, day after tomorrow, I start at Home Depot. I think last time I talked to you was like March 28th or something of that nature. Uh, mid to late March. So it took me a little while to actually get, um, get things rolling financially. But I've been enjoying myself, uh, making myself at home in Flagstaff nice people but I didn't really want to get into the financial fuel section uh, of the trip you know I wanted to get into the spiritual section of the trip because it's a spiritual journey uh, by high and most part so um, <clears throat> didn't quite have a grasp on what angle of spirituality you know I was exactly coming from I just knew it was um, uh, some sort of enlightenment and upliftment that I was looking for. So um, things started developing, and we're going to take it to the beginning. And I'm going to just call the spiritual journey so far what it looked like the direction it is to unblock higher senses, uh, to get in touch with nature and unblock higher senses. Uh, and that having something to do, I'm here in Sedona or well, Flagstaff, southwest area four corners is not far from here and a lot of this is sacred ground uh, for the native americans and uh, has a lot of spiritual quality to them so i'm in the right area to do such a thing um, so starting back in raleigh uh, let's start with uh, where my spiritual status was before just before the trip um, i was in a uh, a blocking relationship uh, when I say a blocking relationship I could see over the horizon and see that there was opportunities for me to vibrate higher uh, to be in a better mentality a better state of mind a better spirit and I was in a relationship that was where my partner was not willing to go the full length my, my partner was uh, to a point where she was kind of in material phase. I gotta watch around here. There's some big ravens, oh my goodness gracious. But that's just a woodpecker, Lord today. Anyways, all right, so, um, my partner was unwilling to let go of her, I'll put material slash fear, 
you hold on to the material, you build attachment, and when it's, it's time to let go, you fear. You know what I mean? And we were blocked in, in a way of to speaking in divine love, speaking in relations, speaking in divine love. Uh, there's a, um, we weren't able to attachment, to detach and reach up to that higher level. It was stuck in materialism. Um, me, I was kind of unwilling to let go of the sensational comfort of a relationship. You know, I like being in a relationship. I love my partner still to this day. You know what I mean? And I still consider her my wife, but that's another subject. You know what I mean? Uh, I was not sure. This is what I have her. Not sure of the thought of giving up on the partner versus unblocking divine love. What that means is, all right, when you love somebody, you don't really give up on them easy. You know what I mean? I consider that part of love order. You don't give up on folk. You give up on somebody else easy. You give up on yourself easy. So you kind of want to leave a way to, uh, to stand one by someone's side. You know, and that was on one side of a balance, keeping me in the relationship and as far as versus unblocking uh, the divine, the path to divine love. So I'm on one side, I can't give up on her. On the other side, if I stay here, I'm blocking divine love. And I was in, uh, my vocabulary is terrible today, but I was in a battle, I guess you could say, a mental battle. And eventually the tension built to a head and you know wow it's just it's just not getting any better as far as we're not breaking through the material plane to get to a divine love plane we cannot do this together you know what i mean it was building to a head so i eventually prayed for some divine intervention because i couldn't find it within myself or i didn't find it within myself to break free uh hey i'm not giving up on you still to this day I asked for higher powers to make that happen, and eventually that did happen. So, uh, the intervention event, well, I, was, I was doing my spiritual deeds, I was doing exercise every day for five days a week, and I had lost 40 pounds, so I was getting it in. And one day I went for a walk and came back and my partner was gone. That was, and that was the last time saying bye for that walk was the last time I heard from her. <laughs> and um, first thing I had to do, and it was kind of immediate. It was like, all right, I have to accept. This is what I pray for immediately. I smoked a couple cigarettes. <laughs> I shouldn't tell y'all this, but <laughs> smoked a couple. And um, immediately I put myself in a mode to suppress the heartbreak. You know what I mean? Because 13 years. We went at it for 13 years, and you know, st you know, it's still a question. So I had to accept divine intervention. Thank you, and then I had to uh, suppress the heartbreak so that because the situation was, was I was not working, rent due. Basically, I'm homeless at that point. You know, I have to start thinking of you know living outside uh, of those parameters. So. A couple days happened, you know, a couple days went by, and I'm like, okay, at this point, I can go anywhere I want to go, and I decided, if you look back in my previous video, you know, first, second, third videos, where I'm talking about this trip, uh, I decided to go to Sedona. I had a number of synchronicities that had been coming up in my path and uh, resonating with me in a certain way where I had decided, that's why I'm, I'm going to go to Sedona. And when the divine intervention happened, it, I, hey, no better time. Usually, when I'm flat broke, <laughs> it's, uh, they say crisis is opportunity, and that's how I look at it. Like, well, how can I flip this to make it the best ever? You know what I mean? So I don't really grab a hold of the misery. So let me move forward here. Um, let's see. When I decided that I was coming to Sedona, I remember sitting in my lazy boy. I was doing research and everything. And I had a um, a vision, a kind of like dealing with some Native Americans in a shamanistic, 
kind of participation and me going to the next level, uh, meaning that unblock. I wasn't thinking an unblock at the beginning. I just kind of developed to that. But it makes perfect sense. That's what I was thinking. Um, and I just, you know, Sedona, Native American, sacred, shaman, some type of experience to the next level, uh, divine love, my, just period, uh, next lesson, just my next level, you know, as far as my spiritual development. Um, once I got to Sedona, I uh, climbed Sugarloaf Mountain. Boy, it'd be some noises around here. I climbed Sugar <laughs> Sugarloaf Mountain, and um, as a, as far as pertaining to the, the spiritual lessons and tales or the things you know, things I'm gathering from my journey, when I was on top of the mountain, first thing was fear because I was high up. I was high, and I could see a panoramic pan, panoramic view. So it was like there wasn't nothing on my level except for the ground. Everything around me. Like, it wasn't nothing for me to relate with. I was just on top of everything with a panoramic view and, like, just depths below me. And it kind of, like, I'm not used to being in that position on top of a mountain. And it was kind of scary. I did some jumping jacks, and then I was able to reduce my mind to not being scared to a heightened sense of awareness. And what I did was I calmed myself and just soaked into that higher vibration you know, being on top of that mountain, being connected. Like, I could see various mountains all the way around, like, all the way around me. And what I did was calm myself so I could be in a sort of oneness with the nature that was all around me. And it was a, it was a hot, a air element experience, you know. It was like, okay, nothing's there, but everything's there. Like, even this air is what I'm connected to. Um, what it helped me realize... Uh, as an artist, you kind of put things in abstract and logical. It was like, okay, I have to climb this mountain. That was an obstacle to get to the mountain. And when I got to the top of the mountain, it's going to be new air. It's going to, you know, it could be fearful, but just stay calm, accept the oneness. And, you know, that was the mode I was going to have to take, climb the obstacle. And when I get there, don't get scared. Soak it in and accept the next level up. You know what I'm saying? Connect connect to a higher vibration so yeah I wrote notes that's how I do it sometimes um so I got to the top of the mountain that was the height of my experience in Sedona uh it was pretty expensive there but I found a brother down on the main strip 89 who did a five dollar chicken dinner what's up I don't forgot the name of mad dog or something like that a pizza place but he did fried chicken dinners for five bucks it saved my uh it was a high point as well, but not as high as that. Uh, so, the Flagstaff experience, and at that point it was like, okay, so I'm, I'm in Flagstaff, I'm out of Sedona, how do I manifest this into a spiritual journey where I'm learning from? So, I kind of split the mission, it kind of took a dichotomy. It was, uh, one was staying in the spirit of the journey's purpose, on one end of things, and on the other end, uh, was manifesting opportunities on the physical plane. Uh, you know, dealing with money, dealing with shelter, dealing with food, and things of that nature. Uh, those are two avenues that I have to constantly checkpoint every day. You know what I mean? Um, staying in the purpose. Let's go down that road first. So staying in the purpose. The first thing, I, every day I go outside, you know, even before I go to bed at night, but just starting the day, I have to remember to stay open to synchronicity, you know. Synchronicity is always on and popping, and it's not when you forget about it. So that was the first thing I wanted to do. And then um, if you remember the last time I had a talk with you, I talked about having a synchronicity, uh, going to Grand Canyon. I missed a bus. I'm filling out an application, missed a bus, ended up getting to another stop that made me walk a certain way to where... Uh, I passed by the office of the people that hired the Grand Canyon at the South Rim. And that is the, my A plan right now, still. And that was um, because it was, a, it was such a synchronicity, the heightened sense of the moment, you could feel the intuition stirring and everything like that. Um, also, since I've been here, 
I used to work for an organization and I had a supervisor. His name was Miguel and he traveled the, the nation pretty much homeless. I don't know his financial situation, but it seemed to me he was hitchhiking, hopping trains. You know, he was doing it on his own G. So I got, uh, I had to actually, for job applications, ask him for his phone number to, you know, make it easier for my reference checks. And he got to talking to me, and it was this is actually his favorite part of the country, naturally speaking, as well. And he was telling me to make sure I visit all the sacred lands I can. He mentioned going to Four Corners, which is where Arizona, Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico meet, meet and it's a major Indian reservation, sacred land kind of uh, vista or point. <laughs> uh, Chaco Canyon, he told me to go uh, check out. And he also gave me clues on there's an organization called Rainbow or Rainbow People and they have a Rainbow Festival there, but they're not an organization. They're like, let's just call it a network of people that travel and uh, they work together on, on a spiritual kind of a vibe like I'm on. So he was telling me, you know, I would fit like a puzzle and I would be able to travel better if I met them. So I kind of put that into my information bank. Uh, as to how I'm going to develop this journey. So now I'm in Flagstaff and I can foresee myself, uh, even if I go to Grand Canyon, which is still my A plan, Grand Canyon would allow me to save some money up and make things more comfortable. But even if I don't do that, I got this Home Depot job, I could stack up a little and I could travel. And now I got like places to go because my man Miguel, that was a nice synchronicity. Also, I also in the last video spoke of a, a guy named Mark from Louisville. And he was traveling from Louisville and uh, to, to actually all the way up to Seattle. He crossed through Flagstaff and I got the um, pleasure to meet with him, hang with him. And he was, um, his thing was he was traveling very minimal budget such as myself, but he does it high speed. He does couch surfing, uh, hitchhiking, truck stops, uh, little odd jobs here and there. He'll stay a couple days here and there. Uh, he stayed in Flagstaff for a couple weeks, which he said was like his longest stay in any point on his trip. And he's just mostly counting on surviving with his own G, you know, connected with, you know, the universe and the kindness of strangers. So what he does, what he d does for me, when I think about Mark, I think about not being stuck. Uh, like I said, I, I have to, uh, the dichotomy of my trip is a spiritual look and a physical look. He, he barely, like he, how I vision, he, he, how, how can I say this? He minimally touches the physical so he could stay in the, the spirit of his journey the most. Like, things that in the physical, most people would be like, oh my God, we got to do this. We got to, he'll skip three or four steps and get the bare, he, you know, when you're in high spirit, you know the bare minimum with the physicals, what you need. And, and he rem and he's able to bounce like that, you know. It's time to bounce. Spirit is gonna carry me. Physical spirit, anyway. You know what I mean. So he's good like that, and I admire him. And I, I when I think the thought of him, it just it, it, it lets me know someone else is doing it and, and getting away with it too, and got a system in it too. You know what I mean. Uh, also, uh, through Mark, I met a guy named Randy. Rand uh, Mark actually left out of here with Randy. To the Grand Canyon, they hung out. Randy came back here to Flagstaff. But Randy, he's an older gentleman, a white haired fellow. Uh, if you look back at my um, video on Buffalo Park, Randy's in that video as well. He loves talking about traveling. Being around him just gets keeps me in the mold of like accepting traveling, accepting this fun, accepting nature, accepting that's fun, and how. He gets a kick out of it. Me, I'm actually on a journey of conquering fear because it is my first time. Being around him lightens the load for me. Um, and he has a lot of good information as well. I met a guy named Big Bear here. His name is Jared. He's a Native American cat here. Um, he broke down something to me where he went through a ritual where he was the clown. And the clown is, is not like how I guess the Western European look at the clown in a circus, not not exactly. The clown is is like uh, looked up highly, and what he does is he shows you yourself in a humor uh, a humored way, 
like when you call yourself the clown from that angle from where he's coming from you like you the man and you showing people the way and you use a humor to do it you know what I mean? and i like that about him also i looked at him he's the big compassion he's the, he's big as i call him i named him big bear <laughs> right and he he's big like you you look at him you be like man he could do damage to a brother if he wanted to but he's the most compassionate dude i've met since i've been here what's up big bear holla at your boy um and he also invited me to a heavy metal concert, my first heavy metal concert ever in life here in Flagstaff. I had a good time, ended up mosh pitting and everything. Uh, peace out to um, uh, Defenestr Defenestration. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, Leland, uh, one of the staff at the shelter I'm staying in. He was lead singer of the band that you know went there. It was other bands. Also, I met a friend, my man, Dr. Ken, hailing from Mississippi Strong via... I don't know if he want me to give him all his information out like that because he's just that type of fellow. You know, he's straight and to the point. He moves slowly. Being around him, he's a Taurus brother, so he keeps me grounded. The headquarters of that logic kind of vibe. And anytime I come home from a long day or whatever, I, I go out and I chill with him for a minute and get grounded. Um, he helps me stay strong, uh, consistent, grounded. And when I think of him, I think of him, to me the masters, they move slow like the sun. The masters ain't binging all over the place, not knowing like, like uh, chasing things. Masters, they move slow like the sun. Like <laughs> the sun gonna do what it do is regard and look how many things depend on the sun because it's dependable. It ain't all over the place. It's steady, smooth, slow, and steady. That's Dr. Ken, I like his vibe like that. Um, and pretty much um that has been my um the, the spiritual elements that have been working uh with me on this journey so far i guess a little deeper but i just wanted to put those out there um also the dichotomy is money i could i put money physical fuel you know on the physical plane uh i did get hired at the north rim at the Grand Canyon, the Grand Canyon and South Rim, North Rim. The North Rim was kind of more Mormon-y and they didn't uh, accept dreadlocks, so, or locks. So I had to turn them down, which was a little disappointing because they had the more comfortable living quarters. Uh, South Rim is like two people to a room or maybe even four people to a room, whereas, um, the North Rim, it was three apart, three rooms in an apartment, and you had your own room. But I don't think I would have um, enjoyed myself there because if they don't allow locks in the year 2013. You know, you can read between the lines. So, um, but looking at that on the spiritual level, I had got to the point where I was looking for jobs that had become the dominant factor of the journey, and it was starting to feel, it was starting to drain me of energy because it was like. I'm only thinking about jobs. I'm only thinking about money. And I was actually not taking advantage of the beautiful nature here in um, Flagstaff. Uh, you see, I'm still a little nervous. I need to be getting out more and getting over um, my fears of nature. And, and, and beyond that, I need to be just tuning in better to help relieve my block. You know what I'm saying? So that I can get to another, uh, the next enlightened level. That was one thing... Uh, that I wanted to share, and it was actually causing a little depression, you know what I mean? And I had to snap out of it. I'm still, you know, I still keep an eye on it, and at a couple points in time, it can be depressing, but, you know, I'm here on a spiritual journey. I got to keep that first, synchronicity. I got to be open to synchronicities all day. All right. So, again, I just got into it, you know, after two months, it got depressing, you know what I'm saying? And I was not putting enough intent on staying in a spiritual place for my spiritual purpose. So then after a while, compounding the fact that I was, you know, looking for work and that was going slow and it kind of diverted my attention from the spiritual journey. After a while, like I said, 13 years with my partner, my relationship. And, you know, I had to accept my heart feelings of that relationship's loss. Eventually that kicked in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
And, um, you know, I'm still reaching out to her, trying to get in touch with her. I still haven't gotten in touch with her, really. Um, I had one moment where I got in touch with her on, you know, social networking through chatting. And it wasn't even words. It was more like uh, uh, emoticon kind of a thing, which did, which, which was appreciated by her. Um, I'm still hoping to re- work the relationship out. Um, and that may or may not rub up, a, you know, resist against my enlightenment. So, you know, I'm dealing with that. Uh, I'm still holding on to her. I looked at her as my wife. I'm still holding on to her as my wife. Uh, you know, uh, the only thing I can say is if I can manage to stay within my spiritual purpose, that might be able to fly. But I'm, I, I've made the decision that if I have to let that go, I can't be attached to that because that is attached to materialistic and fear. I can't be attached to that. So, you know, that's how that's going. And I, you know, the thought of her being with somebody else, I got a little jealousy in my heart, which is basically all attachment and everything like that. That all of those things I just named relevant to her rubbing up against me. So I got I'm worrying too much about this job search and getting money. And I'm worrying about her. And it was kind of distracting me from my spiritual purpose. I'm being frank here. Uh, and I got to a point where it was like, yo, you, the, the, op, you, the, the thing that you're here for, you're doing the opposite. You're getting all, you know, depressed and, you know, you pray to get away from her, you know. What's up with that? You know what I mean? And, you know, you kind of vowed not to really get caught up in systematic uh, mind thinking as far as you know the capitalistic systematics uh, you know you here on a divine journey first and foremost all everything else is for all the secondary they just tools and elements for you to put together you know chemistry put to, put that together and make it work for you and I was kind of falling behind you know and, and those things was working on me so what I came to a point was I had to realize that and accept especially dealing with that relationship loss <coughs> I had to realize actively that divine love is greater than the love of our relationship. <coughs> Hopefully, any relationship you in, you want it to match up to divine love as an ideal, as a rule. So I had to force myself to get out of my heartbreak, put myself in a place to accept, you know, resonate in divine love, and let that be in the place that it is, and hopefully. We can work that out through divine love, but it ain't divine love, and divine love is a higher place. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, that was one thing I had to go, you know, one thing, tying back into my spiritual journey and things that I'm learning, you know, on this journey, basically. I knew that, but it's putting it in action. Uh, realizing the possibility that she may never accept divine love as a priority. These are things how I'm getting over the heartbreak. She might not ever accept it, and I have to accept if she, you know she might not ever accept it, and I'm I'm gonna have to be without her. I have to accept that, and then I'm you know moving about my day deliberately, applying divine love as a priority. You know, you walk around thinking about man, my girl, I'm worried about. Her. I wonder as things cross your path, <coughs> you kind of respond with that chemistry in tow, as opposed to okay divine love and things cross your path you respond with that chemistry in tow so purposely keeping that divine love energy in tow um so this last little bit of notes applying synchronicities and depression lessons to to, to uh kind of get back on track to, to the spiritual journey um Again, apply divine love constantly is what I'm learning and, and, and being reminded of. Uh, remember the purpose of journey over the physical the physical playing fears. Oh, I don't have money. I don't have a place. Well, you basically planned on camping, didn't you? Yep, so get with it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, and purposely put the spiritual journey over any physical fear. Like any physical... You know, you got to deal with the science of things, but science match up with spirit, basically. So, what I'm saying is stay outside the fear and the attachment and the materialism, you know what I'm saying, of the physical realm while you're on this journey. Because we're conditioned 
really to be imbalanced in materialism. So that's where I'm coming from. It's like what we used to doing every day is pretty much an imbalance in materialism. And I'm having to remember the spirit of the journey, or the, you know, the lessons of the journey. Put that first. Um, and another thing, uh, I went out one night, smoked a cigarette, looked up at the stars in Arizona. I can see the stars. It's crazy. I can see the stars in Arizona. And I'm out chilling. Uh, I'm look. I'm actually looking at the stars, trying to see if any particular thoughts cross my mind, and I see a shooting star for the first time I'm, in my life. And I'm gonna call it a shooting star. I, I, you know, I'm not, you know, that UFO stuff. I don't know. It might have been one. You know what I'm saying? But I looked up YouTube shooting stars. The next day, it resembled a shooting star, and you know, I took that as a sign. And the thought that actually came while that sign occurred was listen you worry too much what could go wrong in your future Delano you will be just like I am have been always you will be you know what I'm saying all these situations is secondary to the fact of your being so be you know and that helped me focus on staying in the spiritual and staying in the now and and not over anticipating bringing unnecessary stress to my spirit um <clears throat> talking to miguel and everyday occurrences uh uh i line up the fact that i'm going to go to these sacred sites so that's developing and i can actually see a plan b plan um and encompassing all you know going to sacred sites and I'm, making an, I'm going to make an active um, mission to find a shaman while I'm at the Four Corners. Uh, you know what I mean? I might get led other places, but I'm going to make an active uh, effort to see a shaman. And, yo, I, yo, I feel I'm blocked after a certain point. A certain sensitivities people have, certain sites, second and third sites, you know, intuition. I feel that I could be much better at you know, you know. Can you read me? And, you know, any uh, suggestions? You know what I'm saying? Any ceremony? I mean, I'm just gonna ask and start trying to see what's up because that is an aspect that we in Western civilization we don't have. You know what I mean? And I want to take advantage of the fact of being here. So, and. Actually, I bumped into a dude on another synchronistic level <sighs> coming back from uh, a job situation. I don't even want to get there no more. I am kind of don't even want to talk about it in the video no more. Um, coming back from that, I'm sitting there like, okay, I got to wait for certain things to happen in the physical plane. And the spiritual plane just knocked on my door. Boom, boom, boom. Here's a, um, a Navajo transit system schedule. I didn't even know they had a Navajo transit system. So I can get from several, several reservations one to another on a whole bus system and it's only like two dollars for every route and I can get close to the four corners I can get to within 80 miles of the four corners I don't know how far I am right now to be frank with you but I can cut the distance down greatly and, and be very like right on the edge of four corners by using this Navajo transit system so Things are starting to line up where I was like, how am I going to get into a reservation? I don't know how the first thing about how I'm going to get to the Four Corners or any reservation. Boom. Things are starting to pop. And what I'm waiting for now to pop the clutch moment is Grand Canyon South Rim. Are they going to call me? Am I going to be working there? If I am, I'm going to be in another sacred site working, saving money. And it's a system where I can save a lot of money. And... I can work for three months, I can work for six months, um, and then go about my journey. If I'm going, six months, I don't really want to do that. But if I find that working three months is not leaving me with enough of a nugget to travel, then I may stay six months now. But I just had the thought of my man, Mark, I probably want to just work three months. And then, you know, once I get through with the spiritual journey, I plan on staying in that type of national park working system and working six months off three months, working six months off three months. Because I'm not a nine to five or uh, all day, all year 
all life long. That's not going to be my style. And even that six to three, six month on, three month off, that's until I get some type of uh, business kicked off or until I come a full time camper, whatever one pop most naturally <laughs> and most spiritually, you know, acceptable. So let's see. I got any more notes over here. That's it. Just wanted to touch on some of the points uh, of my spiritual journey. Uh, I can also gonna um, as I'm getting ready to prepare to leave Flagstaff, I'm gonna uh, try to get some interviews or at least a couple of words from some of my friends, some of the guys I just mentioned, uh, and that's about it. Um, always stay in synchronicity, divine love is over relationship love um yo don't think too far in the future to a, a way where you stressing because you ain't gonna be able to do nothing until you get through moments in the now so remember you will always be and, and that always leads you to i am if you stay in the i am you'll get to will be eventually you know what i'm saying and when you get there you want to be there as i am anyway you want to be there in the now um <clears throat> and i'm going to visit the sacred sites while I'm here and I got more sacred sites under my belt here. Holla at your boy, Easy Style Variety Society, Sedona Diaries. Yes, yes. Let's talk about those sensitive memories where I love get shaken. The lessons we learn, water crystalline, baby. Yo. Water crystalline, emotional memories that's frozen in the back of my mind. Let's set it free. Starting junior high school, her name was the Candace. I had the biggest crush, but not much more that I managed. Was my first number and phone call through the panic. I pressed the seven digits and I bid for her friendship. First month, first year, three, four, five.